Frankenstein. We call her Frankenstein because this is my personal 1911 and there are no two pieces on this gun that started out life in the same end of the country. I asked solicited opinions from my Patreon viewers about what they wanted to see and the 1911 was one of them. So we're not going down inside this gun today, but we're going to start on the outside with one of the most commonly screwed up parts, the grips. Let's go, shall we? Well, we're going to concentrate on grips today. Eventually I'll get all the way down inside this thing, but we're doing this on kind of short notice because I've got a set of grips that I'm supposed to check her. This pair of scales was done by RWS Woodworks. Found this man on um, Instagram and have instantly become friends with this cat because he can make me what I want, which is a blank walnut rosewood. Oh my God, he's got something that looks like a Brazilian tangle nut screwed up, a, a redwood tree. I don't know what he, where he got all this stuff. But he can make me what I need, which is a custom 1911 scale that's in the white with no finish on it and no checkering. He doesn't checker. But when you do 1911s like we're doing them, you need to have the ability to um, you know, do custom sand out, do the things that you need to do to it. It's kind of important because if you buy a regular set of grips... They've had all these things done to them. They've been checkered. They've been finished. And you got to undo all that. And if you want to customize or if they didn't lay the pattern on the way you want it, well, you're just SOL, aren't you? All right. <clears throat> so step one is going to be to pull the grips off. I want to emphasize something here. This grip screw is a .150 by 50. That's not a very big, it's a lot of threads per inch. I'm going to tell you what. It's 150 in diameter, 0 0.150 in diameter, and it's 50 threads per inch, but it gets worse. The side walls of this magazine well, the side walls of this magazine well are not very thick. Okay, we're going to reach in here and just kind of gently pop that off. That leaves us with the number one thing that gets screwed up about this are these bushings. These bushings are here because if you tried to do 50 threads per inch through that much steel, they would strip out in no time. In order to have, oh, excuse me, in order to have enough um, thread depth, the bushings have to go in. But the thing most people don't get about the bushings is these are either red Loctited or if they're done right up inside the magazine well up in here, they're staked in right there. Let me rotate that. That staked in, there's a four point stake that goes on in that thing and opens it up like a rivet. If your grip bushings cause this bushing to uh, thread out, it's going to come out of a 0.235 by 60 hole. I'm not taking the grip bushings out of Frankenstein just to demonstrate how they can be screwed up. But a 60 thread per inch fastener can be cross threaded in a heartbeat. So the number one thing I want you guys to remember about this, these screws should have a very, very, very light coating of molybdenum on them. Do not under any circumstances get a little bit of molybdenum. I've said that before. Do not, under any circumstances, Loctite these things in, and you don't have to grill them down. Run them down until the grips stay snug. What are the grips snugging up against? Ah, uh, there is no way I can show this. Oh, there it is. There is a very, very light collar in here that the grip screw is going to push through and lay down on top of that. Now, these are custom scales, which means he left these holes ever so slightly tight which I love this guy. So here we go. If you over torque this, this will pull right through that piece of wood, strip out and the grip will fall right off. If you strip this out, you're, you, there are oversized grip taps and I'm gonna tell you what, most self-effacing 1911 guys are gonna charge you out the wazoo to retap that because it's a $45 tap. 
and I'm going to tell you, I don't charge by the hole. How much does it cost you to drill and tap this hole? Got a hundred dollar minimum shop charge. Well, but how much is it going to cost to do this? It's a hundred bucks, guys. So don't don't do that to me. The other one I love are answering questions and 25, 30, 40 conversations going back. You're not listening to what I'm saying. You obviously haven't watched the video. Sooner or later, I got to cut that off. So if I stop talking to you, it's just because I don't have the time to talk to you because you're not listening to what I'm saying anyway. All right, here we go. Bushings are attached. This is just absolutely glorious, the fit. Now, why this particular set of scales? Well, the gentleman that owns RWS said, hey, these aren't as thick as regular grips. They're not as thin as the thin line grips. Put these on a gun and give me some feedback and tell me what you think. So what we're going to do here now that we're sure that this fits and that the slide release works and that the safety can be operated. Okay, they're perfectly cut. We're going to checker these. We're going to throw them up on a cradle, run a pattern on this. Then I'm going to take these over to, to uh, CNS uh, Indoor Range. And we're going to hand this thing around to 15, 20 different people and see how they think. And then we're going to give RWS Woodworks some feedback. So how in the hell do you hold on to something that's this thin? That's the real big trick in checkering. We're going to get over here to the cradle in a minute. How do you hang on to it so that you can work it? Well, in this case, I just got a piece of one by two out. And this piece of one by two is gonna have to be trimmed because in, in this grip, we're gonna come up to a line that's right around the outside of this thing and check her up to a line. So we need to be able to pull the tool off down at an angle like this. We need to be able to work underneath it. We may be able to get away with it here. Yeah, we're gonna cut that. So what I'll do I'll draw a line here and we'll run over to the bandsaw and cut that. So this will get cut to here like that. So we'll remove this. We'll remove this piece of wood right here and cut that in so that when this grip sits down on top of it, it's overhanging everything. All right, that'll work. And then We've got a pilot drill a couple of holes for this. I'm going to use non-standard grip screws. Okay. These are going to drop through, and they're going to draw up on that taper, but they're not going to overhang so far that I can't get the, the, uh, the cutting tool up into the corner. All right. So this will work. We're going to go take a quick trip over to the uh, bandsaw, and we'll be right back. Donkey, okay. I'll do. Okay. And go in here and get a center punch. Uh, whoop! And we're back. I don't know how the hell Bruno's going to edit that, but I'm sure it's going to be funny as hell. Okay, so I'm just center punching in about where I want these holes to be. Right there and right there. So we're hanging off the edges on the sides. There's nothing I can do about not hanging off the edge on the bottom, but it won't matter because that's where all the material is. Here it tapers to almost nothing. So having done that, I'm going to grab my drill motor here. Spot a couple of holes right quick. Uh, let's see here. This ought to work right there. We don't want a tremendous amount of torque on these holes, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna spot drill them bigger than I would ordinarily spot a hole up. Okay. 
you're saying, why don't I have a jig for this? I haven't. I've never met somebody that would actually make me 1911 grips, and I didn't want to set up to do it. Um, so I had just been kind of making do because I hadn't needed. But this cat's got jigs. He's got milling machines. He's got all this stuff. That just makes this interesting. Now, when you're running the screw down, do not run it down under power. I'm trying to stay in the middle here. Because if you run it down underneath power... The taper on the bottom of the screw will just split it. All I want to do is kiss it. See, it's still a little bit light. Still a little bit light. A little bit, another half turn, and we're going to be there. Now it's touching down there. There we go. If you go too hard, you'll just blow this up. And I'm going to tell you what. These grips are not inexpensive, nor should they be, because they're not made with a computer machine. They're not making 100,000 of them a day. These are made one at a time, and then they're hand sanded and sent to me. If you wanted a set of these grips checkered by me, it would cost you about three to $350, depending on the pattern you want on them. By the time they make them, I bring them up here, check them, and then get a layer of finish on them. You're going to spend three to three hundred and fifty bucks by the time the shipping's involved, and I put my time in it. It's just because there is a tremendous amount of time in it. To the checkering cradle, shall we? All right, I've been doing a lot of work on the shop, and I finally got my checkering station permed in, and I have this stood away so that um, I have the capacity to get around both sides of it. Did I turn it on? I sure did. So I have the capacity to come around both sides of it. I need to be able to get on the out, to, to be able to get there. Um, the way we're set here, Bruno's going to kill the lights. Kill the overheads, please, sir. When he does that, we're going to watch the contrast show up. Now, we've covered this before, but we've never covered this in this kind of detail. Now, go ahead and kill the ones on a bench, and we'll be there, right? We'll be all the way down to the way it is. The only thing that's missing is the Vivaldi. However, I've been told that I can't play Vivaldi because God forbid somebody wrote something 300 years ago and their kids, 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 kids thinks it's okay to actually earn money off of that labor. Wow. I think and I'm going to charge an eye tax every time you, um, you fire one of the guns that I've made so that 90 years from now, every time you fire a shot, I can get paid 10 cents. I deserve that. I'm an artist. Anyway, now we see the, um, the contrast here. Bruno has killed all the lights and, um, you can see, we now we've described this in the previous videos, but I know nobody's gone back and watched it anyway. So when we check her, we're trying to cross light and we can see that. So here we are. We'll break this loose and we'll take this A5 out of here. This A5 was the next one to be checkered, but we need to shoot some video because I want to go home for Easter. So we'll set that A5 up there and we'll bring this up. We'll have to slide this in. So uh, let's keep running. So as we've seen in previous videos before, we've got to have a center line. Well, I'll tell you what, traditionally there's a diamond that runs uh, around these two grip screws. There's a diamond, an uncheckered diamond. So in this case, I very lightly uh, marked a pencil line because if you push, you will actually create a dent here. And I haven't, this is a stupid soft pencil. 
All right, so because of that, and we won about three to ones in these, three and a half to ones are too pointy. So right through the center of this thing, we'll lay a three to one on it right there. And this is where our master lines are going to go. Once again, we've done, I've shown you checkering ad nauseum ad infinitum, right? I don't need to show you that. There's our masters. And as we walk this down, we'll make a decision about where we're going to stop and go around that grip. We'll make a decision about where we're going to stop and go around the other one, too. So, let me get some tape going here. Ah, I don't have a fingernail. I, uh, I involve myself in a casualty that involved losing that fingernail. So, once again, with the tape, nice and tight. Okay. Lay the tape on that. And don't worry about it getting on that, that screw head. Just kind of lay the tape over it. Bang. And we've got it, right? So we're going to checker. Basically, there's a very, very thin line. We're checkering right up to the end. We're not leaving a border. We're not doing anything. Full coverage pattern. We'll go ahead and we'll cut this master line right here. I'm using carbide tools. Now, how do I learn how to checker? Pick up a tool and start screwing up.
Okay, we've got it completely spaced off now. So now it's just a matter of knowing which uh, order that we're going to um, finish deepening this in. We're going to go, we've spaced it, so we're going to go pass number one is going to go that way. Okay, pass number two is going to go this way. Pass number three will go that way. And pass number four will go this way. So that's kind of where we're going to be. All right, got to do some admin. Be right back. All right, 
and so on and so on and so on ad infinitum ad nauseum. My God, you guys have watched me do this before. All right, there was probably a fade edit here because telephone went off. It started raining like a cow pissing on a flat rock. Rick's back there banging on the lay, doing something. Um, so we had to cut away. So all right, so I've done one, two, three, four, and now I'm just coming back in and tightening up. So, um, and I'm trying to make the lines match each other all the way at the bottom. So someone would say, why such fine diamonds? Well, these grips are so thin. I was actually in imminent peril of breaking out down here. And I didn't want to go with too big of diamonds because you got to cut those uh, big diamonds really deep. So we'll just come back in here and clean all this up. We'll clean up around these edges. Um, we'll do all the, uh, just all the little stuff here. We have not figured out a good hard way for you guys to see what I'm seeing. Because if we mount a camera on me, it's bouncing all over hell and back, and you're not motion stabilized. All right. Well, that, and I'm sure you're going to get to see it at high speed, and then you guys are going to play it back at one and a half or two X. So I'm going to be flying. That's one grip. You still got to do the other panel. There's still some cleanup to be done here. But yeah, this is pretty much it. So I'm going to do that cleanup. Catch you guys on the flip side. We're going to stain these things, the uh, the Vanderhaven Formula uh, Red. And these suckers are going to jam up. So next time you see them, we'll be back at the gun. Big, fat, juicy rain going on in the background. You're going to love that. Okay. All is in vain when an angel wets in the vent of your musket. Um, I went ahead. I finished checkering this grip. And I'm kind of hoping that we'll be able to bring out the fact that it's actually checkered. I'm, Bruno is going to pick it up and post. He's going to punch this up a little bit, and we'll see what he can come up with. That one's checkered. So this RWS cat that I'm working with is making me one-of-a-kind scales for bobcats, bob, uh, bobtails. I've been cutting the back ends off these things. This is an Ed Brown bobtail. Come in, you grind it off. We're working on this. This is for the uh, uncle of uh, my business associate. Problem is, is that a regular grip, if it's already been, um, here, let me find one here that'll fit this side. If it's already been cut for a standard frame, by the time you get done modifying this so that it does the butt, all the angles are wrong. But, ah, uh, you see, I'm getting custom grips made for me one at a time so I don't have any of those issues he's left it long down here he's left it long or even flat so if we choose to put a speed well on it it mounts if not I just come in and cut the bevel off yeah and then work in any kind of wood too so this is some sexy shit right here I gotta tell you what good if you guys are wondering hey why is there a bayonet sitting in the background well there's a story here Bruno picked up a pretty nice looking uh, um, Argentine rifle because he's from Argentina. So he's got a, quite the collection of Argentine equipment going. So for the, the, for the guys over on Patreon, I've been um, just showing them how to fix a rather egregious error here. So in case you were wondering there, and speaking, speaking of the Patreon guys, I solicited a list because I can't solicit a list from people that aren't on Patreon because I've got no way to get a hold of you guys. I solicited a list. And so far, here's what we've come up with that people want to see me talk about. Deep rust removal, cosmoline removal. Oh, God, there's that word. Cosmoline's a four-letter word, family-friendly channel. How to clean, uh, uh, how to do a clean of bore, how to clean rifling. They want me to revisit rust bluing. Fire bluing, hot dipping, niter bluing, parkerizing, and anodizing. What's the difference between pinning and dovetailing? Soldering, brazing, anodizing. Triggers, sights and scopes. Common screw-ups and how to avoid them and how to learn how to be a smith. Oh, good Lord, are you kidding me? Um, let's see here. The very last one was, while well, revolver timing... The 1911, and the 1911 was actually, we began to do this because these grips needed to be checkered, and you guys wanted to see the 1911, and my attack on this is going to be to just dive in 
and do, you know, what is an inertial firing pin? Uh, how do you, you know, what, how does this grip safety work, whatever? Maybe I can get Bruno to pop some animations on this thing and show you in detail how it does what it does. Um, and the very last one was there seems to be a great deal of interest in watching me build a muzzle-loading handgun from the bottom up, building a dueling pistol from the bottom up. We can do that, but there ain't no way in heck we won't get that done in one episode. There's a gentleman out there in the in the in the sphere of influence that noted that veterans tend to run well on scotch, cigars, and bad mistakes. He said, so I see you're missing the cigar part. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we did some grips today. Shout out to the people that sent me a box of cigars through the shop, which was truly awesome. And as always, it's been a pleasure, guys, and we'll get on to some other things on that list.